this lecture we will see the schematic diagram of a two input NAND gate and how to draw the layout from the schematic so this is a two input NAND gate What's the symbol of a two input NAND gate? The symbol of a two input NAND gate is it has two inputs, let's say A and B, and the output is Z. and plus not gives NAND so AND is A plus B plus not is the inverter gives A plus B bar or you can write it as A dot B bar now the truth table of a NAND gate is written as Let's say this is this is the input A, B, and the output is zero. Input zero zero, output is one. Input zero one, output is one. One zero, output is one. Or one one, output is zero. Now, how you obtain this, you will see later on. Now, since this is A dot B bar, so when we have a dot operator, we know that the NMOS will be in series and the PMOS will be in parallel so the NMOS is in series and the PMOS is in parallel okay now so there are two inputs Since there are two inputs, we need two PMOS and two NMOS. Okay. Now, let's move to the schematic of a two input NAND gate. First, we'll see the normal schematic. Normal schematic diagram. Of a two input. NAND gate
okay so we know that the p mos is in parallel and the n mos is in series so there are two p mos this is p mos 1 this is p mos 2 the sources of the p mos they are connected to vdd so this is vdd and the two n mos are connected in series is connected to ground so this is input a and this is the input B this is input A this is input B and the output is obtained from here output is Z this is our PMOS 1, this is PMOS 2, this is the NMOS 1, this is the NMOS 2. Now let's see the terminals. This is the source terminal of P1, this is the source terminal of P2, this is the drain terminal of P1 and this is the drain terminal of P2 this is the gate terminal of P1 and this is the gate terminal of P2 so this is the common drain of P1 and P2 so, so we know that the output is obtained always at the drain terminal so this is the drain terminal of N1 source terminal of n1 and this is the gate terminal of n1 and the source of the nmos is connected to ground this is the source terminal of nmos is connected to ground so this is source of n2 this is the drain terminal of n2 this is the gate terminal of n2 Okay, so this is the normal schematic diagram of a two input NAND gate. Now, how will you test the schematic? The schematic diagram of a two input NAND gate. The input is given at the gates, output is obtained at the drain. The inputs inputs A and B are given at the gate terminal gate terminals that is gate of P1 gate of n1 and gate of p2 gate of n2 and the output is obtained at the drain terminal that is 
the drain of P1, drain of P2, drain of N1. That is this point. Now let's see the truth table. How you have obtained the truth table of a twin put NAND gate? So we'll see the explanation for the truth table. Okay, the first condition was when A is equal to 0 and B is equal to 0. So according to our circuit or according to our schematic, when A is equal to 0, B is equal to 0, A input is given to both P1 and n1 and b it is given to p2 and n2 so when a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 0 okay when input let's see the input then the condition of p mos and the condition of n mos When input is 0, PMOS is on and MOS is off. When input is 1, PMOS is off and NMOS is on. Okay. So when a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 0, this p will be on and this p2 will be on, these two will be off. So p1 and p2 remain on and n1 and 2 become off. When P2 and P1 become on, so certainly there will be a short circuit for these two MOSFETs and here there will be a open circuit. When P1 and P2 become short circuited, then how will it appear? Something like this. Similarly, over here, this is connected to VDD. And these two remain open circuited, connected to ground. So the output is at Z. So certainly, since these are open circuit, and these are short circuited and this is open circuited even this is short circuited and they are in parallel so if they are in parallel either when either of this is short circuited then the output will be driven as VDD so Z is gives the value of VDD or you can say it gives a high Uh, or it gives a high value so in our case high value represented by 1 so when input is A is 0 and B is 0 the output Z will be equal to 
the output z will be equal to 1. Now let's see when a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 1. The second condition is when a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 1. So here same p1 n1 and here it is p2 n2. When a is equal to 0 p1 will be activated or this is on. When b is equal to 1 n2 will be on. So P1 and N2 will be on, P2 and N1 remain off. So now let's see what happens to this schematic. This is for P1, P1 will be short circuited, these two will be short circuited and these two will be open circuited so this is short circuited this is p1 now p2 will be open circuited this is same connected to vdd this is p2 that is open circuited then N2 will be on that is short circuited, N1 will be open circuited. So N1 is open circuited and N2 is short circuited. This is ground. This is N1 and N2. So now since there is an open circuit, so this will not work. And here this is short circuited and this is open. Even though this is open, since these are in parallel, the VDD, this VDD will seen in the output Z. So the terminal Z or at the output you get VDD or you can say you get a high voltage or we represent the high volt we represent the high voltage as 1 so when A is equal to 0 B is equal to 1 the op output obtained will be is 1. So similarly we'll see the next case when A is equal to 1 when A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 0 similarly at A we have P1 and N1 at B we have P2 and N2 so when A is 1, N1 will be on. When B is equal to 0, P2 will be on. So P2, N1, they turn on. P1 and N2, they turn off. So if we represent in the schematic, P1 is off. So this is represented as open circuit and since this is on this is represented as short circuit so P1 is off so this is open P1 P2 is on so it is represented as short circuit this is P2 this is connected to VDD. Now here N1 is on. So it is short circuited. And N2 is off so open circuit. This is ground. 
this is n1 and n2 since we have an open circuit here then this will not work and the same condition here here it is open circuit here it is short circuit so even though this is open circuit this is short circuit this open circuit will not affect since the p1 and p2 are in parallel so at the output terminal z we'll get vdd or you can say high voltage or you can say 1 so when a is equal to 1 b is equal to 0 the output obtained will be 1 now the last condition when both the inputs will be 1 when a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 1 again here it is p1 n1 p2 and n2 for b so when both are 1 both p1 and p2 will be off n1 and n2 will be on so p1 and p2 they will turn off n1 and n2 will turn on so when both are off then this is represented by open circuit when both are on this is represented by short circuit so here this is connected to VDD and here both will be short circuited so this is P1 P2 both short circuited and N1 and N2 this is open circuited and both N1 and N2 are short circuited now the output obtained at Z will be driven from ground so the output Z will be equal to low value or low voltage or you can say 0 so when A is equal to 1 B is equal to 1 then the output obtained will be 0 now after getting explanation for the truth table now let's see the twisted schematic diagram of a 2 input NAND gate so now we'll see the twisted schematic diagram of a 2 input NAND gate of a 2 input NAND gate When I say the twisted schematic diagram of a 2 input NAND gate, first draw the normal schematic. So that it's easy for converting it into twisted schematic. So 
so this is let's say this is a and this is b this is a this is b this is the output z p1 p2 n1 and n2 so this is source source drain 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 source drain source so these are the gate terminals now when you have to convert it into twister schematic as we have seen in the earlier lectures twist it in this format this is p1 this is p2 this is n1 and this is n2 so you want to name them it's p1 p2 n1 and n2 the gates of p1 and n1 they are shorted so okay before that can give the name this is the source this is the drain this is the drain this is the source this is the drain source drain and source so now the source of p1 and p2 are shorted to vdd source of p1 and p2 they are shorted to vdd and the two drains are shorted connected next these two drains are connected to the drain of n1 or you can do one thing instead of connecting it will be easier if we connect from here to here from here to here okay. okay we can make it as let's say this is n2 and this is n1 For this case, if I say this is N2 and let's say this is N1. So this train will be connected to the. Okay, before that, these two gates are also shorted. So this train will be connected over here. Then this train and this source are shorted okay the source is connected to ground okay if i make it as n1 and this should be actually n2 then you have to make some changes over here okay accordingly so i if i take this as the actually when i take this as n2 and this as n1 then there will be just a change in the
change over here. This will be connected over here. This is N1 and this will be connected over here. Okay. Now, this is connected over here. Okay, now this is right. This is a twister schematic diagram of a two input NAND gate. Now let's see how to draw the layout from the normal schematic diagram of a two input NAND gate. out from the normal schematic diagram so since there are two PMOS in parallel they have a common drain point so draw the N well first. This is the N well. In order to draw the P diffusion layer. We know that the P diffusion layer is brown in color. So we take the P diffusion layer. Okay, now the same area of the P diffusion, we need the N diffusion layer, which is green in color. So this is the end diffusion layer. And label the P diffusion layer. This is the P diffusion layer. Now after drawing the P diffusion and end diffusion layer, next you have to draw the Poly. This is these are the two inputs A and B. The output will be Y, the output will be Z. If you want to label the source and drain, this is the source terminal of P1, this is its drain terminal, this is the source terminal of D2, N2, this is source terminal of P1, this is drain terminal of P1, source terminal of P2 and this is the drain down a lot of P2. So since these two are shorter, so we need not do anything over here. These are the gates. Similarly, this is the source of N1 
and this is the train here is source and this is the train these are the gate terminals so now in order to make the connections we need the metal layer put and label the poly layer so this is the poly layer now source these two sources are connected to vdd so this is vdd and this is metal 1 okay now this source here is connected to ground okay now this train is connected to this train so okay this is the output that is z a b and z output now in order to do the contacts we need to place the metal contacts so let's make it black in color so there will be one contact over here so this is the end diffusion contact so this is the p diffusion p diffusion layer or p diffusion contact or you can term it as the pdc this is needed in order to connect the metal layer to the diffusion layer Similarly, we need one more contact over here. Now, this is the P diffusion contact. Similarly, we need one more contact over here. This is another PDC contact. So similarly, we need the end diffusion contacts in order to connect the end diffusion layer with the metal layer. So this is the end diffusion contact. And the NDC. Okay, then after placing the end diffusion contacts or the diffusion contacts, we need to place the substrate contacts in the sources that is VDD and ground. So you can place this as many number as you can. So this is the N substrate contact or you can say this is N well contact. 
similarly this is the ground you have to label it as ground so you need This is the P substrate contact. Or the P well contact. So this is the layout of a twin foot NAND gate from the twister schematic diagram. Now let's see the layout from the normal schematic so actually this was the layout from the normal schematic the earlier that we had discussed this was the twister schematic so can erase this part and you can write this as the twister schematic this was a twister schematic not from the normal schematic So now we'll see the layout from the normal schematic diagram. When we talk of the normal schematic diagram, first we have to draw the two PMOS in parallel. So first draw the two annuals. This is the annual. Now next we have the P diffusion layer which is brown in color. So this is the P diffusion layer. This is the P diffusion layer. We write the P diffusion layer as P diff in the commands in magic. Then of the same area we need the N diffusion layer. So the N MOS are in series. So this is one. and this is another one or 
the end of layer. Now let's name the terminals. This is the source, this is the train, this is the gate. Similarly, source, gate, and train. This is drain, gate, source, drain, gate, source. So first connect the gates. So this is input A. Okay. According to our assumption, this is N2 now. And this is this is N1. This is N2. Actually, we had to do this as N1 and this as N2. If you want, you can change it. Then this is. second input that is B and this is the poly layer. Now after connecting the corresponding gates connect the sources to VDD. The sources of the PMOS are connected to VDD. So this is VDD, this is metal one, the two drains are shorted. They are shorted to this drain. Now the source connected to this train connect this source is connected to ground. So this is ground. Now after drawing this, I have to place the contacts. So we we'll start with the diffusion contacts. So this is the P diffusion contact. Or the PDC. Similarly over here. Then similarly we have the end diffusion contacts for connecting the metal layer with the end diffusion layer. So this is the end 
diffusion contact or the NDC contact. Similarly, you have to place some substrate contacts. This is the end substrate contact. Or the NWC. This is the P substrate contact or the PWC. So this is the layout from the normal schematic of a twin foot NAND gate. But let's see another procedure for drawing this and that is using the cell instantiation process in layout in magic we can use cell instantiation in magic Since we'll be drawing the layout in magic. Now, when it when we say it is cell instantiation, what we will do? NAND. We know that NAND is a combination of AND plus NOT. We have drawn the layout of AND. And also the layout for not. So if we call the and cell and cell has two inputs A and B input y is the output this y will be given as input to the not gate cell where y is the input z is the output this is z so these are the cell instantiation process and if you see in the overall way so you get NAND NAND gate with input X so input A B and output is Z now how will you obtain this cell there is a command in magic called get cell suppose your name of this is and2 then you type get cell and2 dot your file then you have to press x in order to see the inner layout then you can connect 
so this is the process of cell instantiation and this is not much followed in the layout process so this is the third way followed in order to draw the layout of a NAND gate in this schematic also we had a dot b actually we designed the a dot b which in complementary form we obtain a dot b bar as the output so this is all about the schematic and layout and this is nand and plus not is nand